Yeah, Raymond and I, are, we're brothers, all right? And I'm thankful for this man of God. Can we just thank your leadership in this place, Jenna Robert? And we're so glad you got out. What a place to come. Um, my name is Tommy Spencer. I, I, I get to come. Matthew, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I, anybody who reaches out, I always say, if we can get it on the schedule, I'm coming. Here's why I'm coming. Because how many of you know that the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, is in this place? And then why, why would you not accept that invitation? I love the namesake of this place. Faith, city, mission. Everybody say faith. Faith. It's not just in the name of this ministry. That is who we are, a people of faith. Amen? Amen. That's who we are. And I want to share with you about faith today. Because in Luke chapter 18, if you'll, you'll go back and read this, verses 1 through 8, you're going to see Jesus teach the disciples about faith. And he, he does it through a parable. And here's what he does. He says, hey, faith is basically this. Never stop praying and never give up. Amen. Do you know what I'm looking at in this room right now? A bunch of sons and daughters who are in the right place where you can exercise your faith. Watch this. With people around you who demonstrate this all the time. We're always going to pray and we're never going to give up. Oh. How long has Space City been here? How, how long has Space City been? Somebody know the history? 72 years. 72 years. Can we celebrate those who went before you, those who are here? Here's what I know to be true because of the legacy of this place, because of sons and daughters who what have responded in faith. There's going to be countless testimonies before the, before the throne of heaven. And you are those testimonies who are going to say, let me tell you how God used Faith City Mission. So I became a son and daughter of faith. And here, it's, it's very simply this, because it's one of those words we don't use, but can I just give you a simple definition? We're going to get it from the Word of God, but it's simply this. I'm always praying, and I'm never giving up. Because I am I promise you this, the enemy's a deceiver and a liar, and watch this. He's either going to convince you something's wrong with God or something's wrong with you. And I want to just tell you right now, will you always let God define who he is through his word? And that is Jesus, the word made flesh. He's the perfect example of the relationship with the father that you and I have an invitation to have also. So I'm going to let God define who he is. I'm not going to let the enemy let me believe some deception about who God is. And then watch, if you'll let God define who he is, now you're going to know who you are. God has written your story. See, the enemy's only trying to come, what, interrupt that. But he was never given a pen. My God has written your story. And it's been recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Is your name written there? Then come on, you're a son and daughter of faith. Amen. And when I wake up today, when I wake up tomorrow, guess what? I'm going to pray and I'm not giving up. Amen. You know why? Because that's what Jesus did. Do you think there was opportunity for him to give up? There was an opportunity, all right? There was. He, he said, is there, is, there, is there any other way, God? Remember in the garden? Is there a way that this cup, what, could pass from me? And I love the humanity of Jesus, don't you? Don't you? He was the lamb sacrificed from the beginning of time. How many know you're going to have some decisions to make and the tempter's going to be staring you in the face and you can echo the words of Jesus? Hey, you, you can go, is there another way? But watch what he then says. He says, but not my will, God, but yours be done. Amen. Do you know how he was able to say that? Just like you and I can say that in this room. Why? Because I'm always going to pray and I'm never going to give up. Because watch this. Can I tell you who, what's happening in the throne room of heaven right now? Hebrews and Romans, Romans talks about this. Guess who's praying? Jesus is at one side of the Father interceding for you. And the Holy Spirit is right there in the room interceding for you. Come on, somebody. You need to be encouraged today. Do you know who's praying for you? Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Do you know who's not giving up on you? Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You're in good company. So if you'll just let their words be the ones that you agree with, then you'll break agreement with the deceiver and liar, and we won't give in to temptation. Right. Some of you heard me say this before, but I'll preach this till Jesus comes. I'm going to not let temptation work against me anymore. Watch this. I'm going to let it be the example of Jesus. The temptation is now an invitation for more of God's revelation, and now I'm going to make a declaration that's only going to lead to transformation. And God's going to get the glorification. Come on. Yeah. Isn't that who we get to be? We get 
get to remind the enemy he's defeated, not us. But it comes from what? A place of faith. How many times did Jesus say to the people, and I'll share a story with you in a moment, by your faith. You know what God's looking for? Just an open heart that will trust him. How, how, how does he know? Luke 18, 8 says these powerful words, and they mark me. When Jesus comes again, and how many of you know he's coming again? Come on. Yeah. No one knows that day or the hour, but I promise you, if he said it, it will happen. Yeah. The reason why he hasn't come, because he's patient, not wanting any to suffer. Aren't you thankful, thankful for the mercy and grace that God's extended to you? And there's still those to what? Say yes. Yeah. So listen to me, church. I can endure and persevere a little bit longer knowing that I'm going to have some new brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. And I'm going to walk in faith. Luke 18, 8 just says this, when Jesus comes and he is coming, will he find that kind of faith being demonstrated on earth? I'm going to testify right now. Who will testify with me? Yes, yes. Jesus, yes. you're going to find faith. Amen. And it looks like this. I'm praying and I'm not giving up. Amen. And I'm not giving up. You know where that starts? Don't give up on yourself. Do you know what? It blesses God today. When you begin to realize the worth and value you have and you're worth fighting for, you know how I know? Because Jesus gave his life for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I can get up and fight, but watch this, not in my strength, always in his. Do you know what the word of God says? In my weakness, he is strong. Call on somebody. Yeah. That's faith. That's faith. When I can't, he can. Yeah. And the promise of the Father and the gift of Jesus is the Holy Spirit of God. So if you're trying to do things apart from the Holy Spirit of God, stop. You were not made to do anything apart from him. Because listen to me. It's not about me or you. It's about us giving glory to him. And that's when we walk in step with the Holy Spirit of God. It says this in Hebrews 11. If you need to look what faith looks like. Hebrews 11. 1. Now faith is being sure. Everybody say sure. sure. Of what we hope for. And certain. Everybody say certain. Sure. Of what we do not see. And then verse 6 says it this way. And without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Can I just tell you what the reward is? It's him. I mean all the other stuff. Come on. We've been given everything we need for life and godliness. It looks like this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That makes us the richest people here on earth. And you know what I'm certain of? You know what I'm sure of? All those things, the fruit of the Spirit, he's still pouring out in greater measure. He's just looking for an open heart. Will you receive what he's already poured out? Amen. And I promise you, your faith will not just be sure and certain. It will be growing and demonstrating. And you are going to be an open door to the throne room of heaven for someone else. Because how many know that the paralytic man had four friends and they, he needed someone to get him to Jesus so that he could stand up and walk? How many of you need to be a demonstration of faith on behalf of your brothers and sisters who just need to be reminded God's arm is not too short to save? His ear is not too dull to hear. Some of the most powerful words we can say is, let me tell you what my God's done for me because he can do it for you too. That's a testimony of faith. In Revelations, it says it this way, and I'll preach this talk until Jesus comes. We overcome the enemy by what? The word of our testimony. And our testimony is about Jesus. And then by what? The blood of the Lamb. So come on, can we testify? Amen. Because the blood is still wet today. It's still saving today. It's still healing today. Thank you for Joe Ann and this. I was in that room that day. Jenna was in that room that day. There was a greater measure of the Father's presence in that room today. Why? Because people came in filled with faith. Yes. Woo! Because why? We are always praying and we're never going to give up. I've invited my friend Tiago. Tiago, come here. You guys will be blessed by Tiago. Tiago makes this. He, he, uh, he's, he's from Brazil. Any Brazilians? Or anybody know Portuguese? Okay, you can introduce them to Portuguese later, all right? Yes. But aren't you, aren't, here's, here's the beauty of the world that we live in. Every one of us made on purpose for a purpose and made in the image of God. This is my brother, all right? We have the same dad. It does not matter where you come from or how you started. You've been made in the image of God. Tiago and I got to serve together underneath Randy Clark's ministry five years ago. And Tiago happened to be one of uh, my translators for our church. Little did I know that he would allow us to cross paths again together. And we just hired Tiago at our church, he and his wife and family, to be our missionaries. And we are starting an after-school program that Tiago is going to help lead at Mesa Verde. Anybody know where Mesa Verde Elementary is? 
North Grand 24th, do you know out of those 400 kids, probably 70% of them, English is their second language. God has sent the nations to Amarillo, Texas. And you know what we get to do? We get to love God and we get to love them. Come on. Somebody. It doesn't matter if you came out of a different religion. Here's what I know. It wasn't about a religion. It was about a relationship. His name is Jesus. For anyone, everybody say anyone. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're not going to go convince somebody that they're wrong in their religion. We're going to go love somebody and they're going to be introduced to a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the kingdom of heaven. So I just asked Tiago just to share a testimony of faith because this man walks in faith. And my faith, Tiago, has been encouraged through you. And I consider it an honor to call you my brother. And on this day here at Faith City, to give you an opportunity just to brag on Jesus. So we all welcome my friend Tiago. And Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So, guys, um, I'm that jungle boy. I was born and raised in Belém. It's north of Brazil, the end of the Amazon River. And if you think about anacondas and those kind of things, it's there. And, uh, but uh, I've been here in the United States for the last three years. It's, uh, it's a long story, but uh, I'll make it short. And uh, I, I met Tommy there. The Lord spoke to me and my wife when we came to the first time to the United States in 20, 2015. And he said, I'll bring you guys here and I'll make that this your nation. Because we were like passing through a place and the Holy Spirit said, look at this place. And we started looking and families broken and such things happening. And uh, we were in Brazil and uh, I was an engineer. Uh, I worked for the university. I was a professor of production engineer. Uh, giving classes uh, for the last eight years and studying my MBA in project management and my master's degree that I didn't finish because I came here, but I was studying in uh, administration business. And, uh, but uh, uh, the Lord spoke to me 2015 and I was like, okay, God, am I going to study a doctor? doctorate or a master degree there, what I'm going to do. And uh, I, I, I became a pastor in Brazil, a youth pastor in 20, 2012, yeah. And um, in, uh, I was walking in faith with my wife. We surrendered our lives to God at the same day, in the same place, and uh, was a was a good walk with God, like helping youth people, helping the church where we were at, and, uh, and then God comes and with this idea of mission <laughs> to my heart, you know, to our hearts, mm -hmm. and then we start serving in a lot of places in Brazil and dreaming about having like a place where we could help the community, like help kids and. And I grew up in a poor neighborhood, but my parents had like a quiet life. And uh, we had like, I think the biggest life on the street. But nowadays where my parents live, some of my friends, they became track camps. And uh, a lot of them got lost, you know. And uh, I'm here like thinking, like I was a child like them, playing soccer on the street with them and, and playing and running around and I'm here today serving the Lord, but some of them are lost, you know, they are in darkness. So I don't want the future generation, I don't want those kids that are coming from all around the nations to Amarillo to get lost, you know, because God has a future for us. God has a future for them. So uh, I was, I met Tommy in that trip, 2019, he was there the first day of that conference. He said, after we prayed for 700 people in the church, and some of them uh, blinds uh, seen again, and in our line, we prayed for a man that he was deaf, and, and uh, uh, he, he started listening again. Amen. And I was translating tongue, 
and, and uh, when I said, in nome de Jesus, that Tom said, in Jesus' name, I said, in nome de Jesus, escute, listen, and he said, his ears opened and he started listening again. Amen. And we saw many miracles and power, powerful miracles that that whole week was impactful to my city. 10,000 healings in two weeks. Like people raising from wheelchairs. Yeah, it was very, very, very powerful. The kingdom of God was established. And, uh, and I, I remember that the first day Tommy said, can I pray for you? And I said, yes. And he prayed for me after he finished praying. He said, Tiago, I feel your calling is not only for Brazil. You have a calling that is not only for your local church, but it's a calling for the nations. And I, I feel the Holy Spirit saying that your calling is going to start through study. So keep ready, because when the opportunity comes, you might be ready. Don't worry about your finances, because God's going to send you the sponsors. And I put that word in my mind. You know, I took notes, and his wife had the opportunity to pray for me the other day, and I didn't know she was his wife, and she gave him a power and prophetic word that uh, helped me through this season. And uh, in the last day of that conference, like we didn't have much time to talk to them and know where, where they were and uh, like their names or things like that, because they, they were like ministering all day and we were just just there just to translate them. And so um, the last week we had time together and I started knowing, oh, you're from Texas, okay. So one of his students came, she, her name is Kyle. She, she came to me and she said, Tiago, uh, I have something for you. I don't know why the, the Holy Spirit saying to give you this to you. It's a simple gift. It's not expensive. It's not from my city, but uh, I, I'm being obedient. So I opened my hand and she put a flag of Texas written Dallas on it. <laughs> and I was like thinking, okay, God, I'm doing my master degree in California. I'm going to Michigan or maybe Florida. I don't know. It's like most uh, weather is, is close to Brazil's weather. And I'm going to Florida. And, and uh, God put the flag of Texas written <laughs> Dallas on my hand. So what? in Dallas, you know, and then I was in that big conference in Brazil one day and one lady just saw me there and through the internet, so don't despise the power of God through technology, someone is watching this maybe in a Facebook uh, live, you know, and that could transform their lives, Amen. so that lady, she saw me in an Instagram post and she said, hey, I'm glad you're there. Tiago, but you know what? God gave me a dream two days ago, and he said to me to pray for a man called Tiago, that he want to bring him and his family to here. But I said, God, I don't know any Tiago, and I'm seeing you there. And I don't know if that makes any sense for you, but God is telling me that he wants to bring you to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I said, what, like six months before I received the that? flag of Texas written Dallas on it and then this lady comes through my Instagram post say that God wants me to Amen. you know like I saw cry <laughs> I know God I know that made sense that <laughs> but I was in Dallas and then God revealed me Steve and I Christ for the nations and that's a Bible school if you don't know but it's Bible school in Dallas and uh so I, I just said okay, and uh, then we, that was February of 2020. So if you remember, in March, COVID came and locked down everyone and every place. It was the same in Brazil, and I was in my apartment uh, balcony, like looking to the cars passing, and like I was uh, praying. That is that gonna be possible? Because you said that uh, 
I don't need to worry about my finances, but at the time I had $100,000, uh, 1,000 reais, which is like $20,000 in, in bank debt. And how am I going to this place? I'm working, working, working. My marriage is kind of broken because I'm going to work 6.30 a.m. and coming back 11 p.m. trying to make money to go to America and I can't. So God spoke to me, it's not in your strength. It's not with your arms. But you remember the day that you surrendered your life to me and you said that everything that I'm giving to you, the day that I ask you, you're gonna give me back? So that's the time, sell everything you have and go. And uh, so the embassy, let's see the scenario. COVID, United States closed the borders for like several countries and I'm there in Brazil stuck because the embassy denied our appointment four times. They said no, nobody can get in into the US. No, no, and no. I said, how am I going there? So I put my apartment to sell. We sold our car, we sold our clothes, we sold like the, my books of the university. I sold everything, and uh, I told my wife, we're gonna go. Amen. She said, how? I said, I don't know, but God is saying, there we go. Yeah. So if he's saying, I trust him, I believe him. Amen. If he's saying, I will believe it, Amen. you know? And uh, then uh, I saw, it was November, our documents to apply to the embassy came, and the embassy is too close. But I found a man that he said to me, Tiago, I can get your visa in Paraguay or Ecuador. I said, how's that possible? He said, yeah, it's COVID, but they open it for the countries that are closed. So you can come, but you have to do quarantine, 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 quarantine. Uh, you have to do your quarantine here for 14 days and then you can fly into the US. So if you get approved, I said, okay. So I spoke to this man like Tuesday and I, I got the tickets at the same day I said my wife's gonna fly Saturday. So what? Yeah, we're gonna fly, let's go, it's time. And then we went from our city, Belém, to Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo to Bogotá, Colombia, Colombia to Ecuador, Guayaquil. And then in Guayaquil, we spent 18 days. It's a like process story, but the day that I got in Guayaquil, the guy that was guiding us through that process, he said, hey, Tiago, I don't have good news for you. The embassy in Ecuador is closing as well because there are a lot of people and COVID here is, is, is bad. So I told him, man, give me time. He said, you can go to Chile. Chile opened it today for, for foreigners. You can come. So I, and then I started my computer, like my engineering mind, you know, putting everything on a, on a uh, sheet and, and, and making calcs and uh, plan A, plan B, plan C. When I got plan C, the Holy Spirit showered on me like, don't you understand? That is not about your plans, it's about my plans. And I'll make it happen. I want you to go and pray and don't give up because I have salvation for you. Mm -hmm. And then we were in an Airbnb at that day, like waiting for the time. So there was a window a little bit bigger than this one on our kitchen. And I looked into that window and there was a mountain on through. And I said to my wife, you know, I'm coming from the assemblies of God. I've never been in a mountain prayer, but today I'll go. <laughs> Because, you know, in Brazil, the assemblies of God, they go to the mountains, they pray, and, and, and those kind of things. And I, and I said, but today I'll go to the mountains, and I will pray. And she said, okay, let's go. Amen. We have nothing else to do. We're stuck here. We're spending our dollars because Ecuador currency is dollar, which is like five times of our Brazilian currency today. And uh, so if you understand, like if I have if I have a hundred dollars in Brazil, you have five hundred of our currency. So it's a lot of money, you know. If you want to go have vacations in Brazil, you go with a thousand dollars, you'll be rich. You're gonna be in the best hotels and 
everywhere, the restaurants. But uh, at that time, we were spending like that. And I uh, said, so, okay, let me go. I went to the mountain and I climbed it. I was there for three hours praying. Mm -hmm. I sang all, that, all those songs that I knew. I put all my tears on the ground, mm -hmm. claiming to God, crying out to God. God, help me. Tell me, give me some answer loudly, you know? Am I going to Chile? Am I going to stay? Am I going to go back to Brazil? What do you want me to do? And after three hours, the Holy Spirit said, go back to your home. You can't go back to your apartment. I said, no, God, that must, that's not the answer that I'm waiting for. And he said, go back to your apartment. And after the third time, the Holy Spirit said to me, I went to my apartment and that man, I took a shower, and I, when I got my phone, the, there was that big message, Tiago, I got an appointment for you in two days. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I said to him, man, I don't know what you believe, but God made a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't believe in God, that's just a miracle. Because yeah. I'm coming from a prayer mountain after three hours praying, and then God gave me the answer. Mm -hmm. So... We went to the embassy, we got our visas, we came to the U.S., we went through uh, uh, Christ for the Nations. I studied three years of baccalaureate in theology there, uh, with emphasis in the pastoral major. In, um, but I was always talking to Tom, like, hey, Tommy, how are you? You know, and, and like, the end of this year, this past year, 2023, June, I think April, I was like thinking about the end of the year because I'm a student here and uh, I can have one more year of practical. I can do that in some place, but I was serving the Brazilian community in Dallas. I will, I've been serving two American churches there working with food pantries, social projects, helping families, and, uh, and then um, the, the doors started like, hey, shutting, shutting down for me. And I said, that's not the way, that's not how God want to do. And then praying again, and God said, me, start to make connections, talk to people. Who are the people there you know? And then I started talking to some of my professors and I was hesitating like sometimes to talk to Tom. No, he's very busy. He has, had, he has a lot of families to take care of and, and the Holy Spirit called Tommy. So I called him that day. I told the story, hey Tommy, God gave me these dreams and these projects uh, to work with kids and to have some kind of uh, help for them and in an after school program so they will be in a safe place, they will be in a good environment to overcome their, their traumas, their, you know, their things in life and, and, and have a good, good life, good future, good perspective. And when I finished saying that, I said, Tiago, I don't know, man, why you called me, but I know that God is on, on the way and, and let's pray about it because our church just received a beauty and our pastor has in his heart to, to do something like that. So we prayed for June, um, July, August, September, October. Then in the first week of October, he called me and said, Tiago, we have a grant that we can support you here because as students, uh, we cannot work. We can just uh, receive from grants and other things. And uh, he said, we have this for you, and, and you can come here and, and work with us in our church. And said, yes. So here am I, after this very story. Thank you, Tiago. Anybody's faith encouraged, never give up, always pray for all. I'm telling you, there's so much more, there's so much more, but here's what I love about that story is, they just continue to trust God. How many of you have heard God speak on your life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I've got good news for you. That word will never be outdated. It, it will never be, you, you can't be disqualified. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going I'm to close this way. And then I'm going to invite you to respond to God. I want to read Mark chapter 10, verse 46. One of my favorite stories in the Bible about a man who responded in faith. Then they came to Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. So Jesus is on his way out. Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. He was a blind man. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, listen, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Anybody been there? I need Jesus. Amen. And then it says, many rebuked him and they told him to be quiet. Anybody been there? Yeah, yeah some people. Hey, you just be quiet, man. You don't bother Jesus. You don't bother those people. You just stay in your corner. But watch what he did. In faith, he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. This is my testimony. Jesus stopped and said some of the most powerful words. Call him. Can I say that's what Jesus has done for every one of you? Amen. You're here because Jesus said, call him, call him, call her, call him. This is where you need to be right now. Why? Because you're in an atmosphere of what? Faith where people pray and never give up. Yes. You're in the right spot. Call him, call him. And listen to his response. So they call to the blind man, cheer up, get on your feet. Jesus is calling you. And here's the faith step right here. And I don't want you to miss it. Bartimaeus says he threw his cloak aside. Think about that. Here's a man who had been on a street corner most of his life blind. And probably his only possession up to that day was the cloak he had. What? For protection. For security. His only possession. But look what his response was. Not to take what he once found security in. Not to take what he once found, you know, covering in. Not to take what was connected to his past. He got up. He threw what? The cloak. Somebody say, throw that cloak aside. Throw that cloak aside. All right? He threw it aside. And watch as He threw it aside. He jumped to his feet. He came to Jesus. And I love this. What do you want me to do for you? And Jesus stands before every one of us. And he asks, what do you want me to do for you? Did Jesus know? He's a blind man. Of course he knew. As this man's running, there's no telling which way he was going, all right? He knew. But why did he ask him? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have worth and value. Tell Jesus again what you need. Amen. Come on. Never stop praying and never give up. And Bartimaeus, watch what he says. He says, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And go, said Jesus. And here it is. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and he followed him along the road. Hebrews says it this way. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, he's the author and perfecter of your faith. Amen. He is not asking you to do something in your strength. He's just asking you, will you keep your eyes on me? Who can do that in this room? But I'm going to tell you what will keep you from keeping your eyes on him. What is the cloak that you're still holding on to? Is there any part of your past that you're still clinging to just going, well, man, if this doesn't work, I still have that to fall back on? No. Did you hear Tiago's story? Did he get permission to come to the United States and then sell everything? Or did he sell everything believing that God had this call upon his life? Amen. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? God will meet you as you take those steps of faith. And I just want to say to you, listen to me. This is not condemnation. We're not bringing up the past. We're not bringing up your cloak. Here's what it is. It's an invitation. Will you throw it aside knowing I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus and he is the author and perfecter of my faith. And what's this? I'm never going to give up and I'm always going to keep praying. Amen. And he's going to give the glory to us. Never let the enemy convince you something's wrong with God or something's wrong with you. Always let God define who he is, and now you'll know who he says you are. And from that place, there will be a faith response. Even when you don't see. I'll close right here. I've had people in this room pray for my wife. She has battled debilitating headaches for 15 plus years. Heartbreaking. But you know what I've watched in those 15 years? My wife never give up. And always keep praying. Amen. I've seen her lay her hands on people with headaches and God deliver that person and heal that person. And her not get offended at God, but draw near to God Amen. and he's drawing near to her. Amen. Two weeks ago, we finally got a report, report from a doctor in Fort Worth. And I know God's at work. He said, this doctor said, I can finally tell you why you've had those headaches. They found the bulge on her jugular vein. No one had ever been able to tell her why. 
it was hurting the way it was. And now she's connecting us to an ENT doctor. But you know what? He's the great physician. And he sustained her. He's healing her. And God has always, listen to me, been faithful. And all we've done is testify. All it's caused us to do is love Jesus more. Be obedient to him more. Never let the enemy convince you that God's holding out on you. God is your reward. And so if you're still asking him for a healing or a breakthrough, do it from a place of what? Faith and hope. That which I'm sure and certain in. I'm not putting my faith in any cloak or anything apart from Jesus Christ. Because he's going to ask you, what can I do for you today? And he's just looking for an open heart. And you just tell him and then trust him and let him get the glory for it. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to leave, I'm just wondering, is there anybody in here? That would just say, I want to be that person who lives a life of faith, who, watch this, always prays and never gives up. And I'm, I'm tossing aside anything from my past. It will no longer define me. Come on. When the enemy tries to bring up your past, you remind him of his future. Amen. Your past has been covered and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But his future is a pit of hell, not yours. So can we just pray for people real quick? If you just go, I want to live a life of faith from this day forward, and I'm not putting any faith in any cloak from my past. Is that anybody who would just stand right here? All we're going to do is just pray. I'm just going to pray for you. Anybody? Come on. That's all of us. I probably, I mean, we're, all we're doing is saying to the Lord, I'm praying, and I'm not giving up, and I'm not putting my faith and trust in anything from my past. Why? Because he's the best protector. He's the best provider. He's the best security. Come on, somebody. He's the one. So right now, Father, lift your hands to him. We do. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And thank you that you give us an invitation to respond in faith. And that's what I'm praying over every person in this room, God, that you would find an open heart that just agrees with who you say you are and who you say we are. And we are going to be sure and certain of this. You're the great reward. And we're going to give testimony of your faithfulness. And there's always going to be a yes and amen in my heart wherever I find myself because you're going to get glory because you're the healer and you're the breakthrough. So I bless every son and daughter in this room because when you put your feet back on this earth, when we hear that trumpet sound, you're going to find us faithful. Amen, church. Amen, amen. sons and daughters. Amen. We're going to be found faithful and others are going to be impacted through our story because it's your story. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. amen. God bless you guys.